Coming up on News Live at 6, we're tracking the latest on that bus crash downstate. New details just ahead. Plus, it's college night over at NBT Bank Stadium. Our Cora May Acosta is live for us with how you can enjoy America's pastime. This is Citrus TV News Live at 6, your campus news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Olivia Maniscalco. And I'm Bradley Hoppenstein. We begin tonight with a developing story right here in New York State. We've learned within the past few hours that one person is dead and almost 50 are injured after a bus rolled over on I-84 downstate. It happened in Orange County, that's about 75 miles north of the city. The students on board were part of a band from Long Island High School, which was headed to Pennsylvania. Authorities are investigating the cause of the crash. State police will be holding a briefing tonight. Here at Citrus TV, we'll keep you updated on new developments as we get them. Well, happening now, it's college night at the Syracuse Mets Stadium. Our own Cora Mayor Costa is live at MBT Bank Stadium with how you can catch a deal. Hey, Cora. There are so many discounts, and that is why this line is so long today. I mean, people have been waiting from around 10 to 15 minutes just to get through the gate. Now, the numbers that you're going to want to know for tonight, and no, they're not lottery ticket numbers, are one, two, three. One dollar soft drinks, two dollar hot dogs, and three dollar beers. And it's also college night for students. Tickets are as cheap as the $13 for each student to just come in and enjoy the game. Not only is it college night or dollar Thursday night, it's also Irish night. So even if you're not Irish, you could come and join the festivities. The first 1,000 fans to walk through the gate get an Irish shirt of the Syracuse Nets team. Now, I don't know if you hear that, but there are bagpipes playing right now inside of the ballpark. I know it's very loud. I can't wait to enjoy that later today. But the interesting thing is, I talked to a few people in line, but the reason why they came today isn't because of the discounts, but because they want to support their team. And that is just fantastic. I mean, the orange and blue, I feel right at home right here. It's amazing. I can't wait to watch the game, especially with all the band playing, the Irish bagpipes. I can't wait to see it. But that's all I have for you now. I'm Cora Maricosta reporting from MBT Bank Stadium. Guys. Thank you, Cora. The Human Rights, the Human Rights Festival kicks off tonight at Syracuse, at Syracuse University. Our Leah Cohn is there right now. Leah, how's it going? And it looks like we're having some technical difficulties getting uh, Leia up, but we will get you that story when we can. Meanwhile, the Office of Diversity and Inclusion is hosting a DEIA symposium next month. The panel discussion will be on SU's approach to affirmative action and the university's next steps in diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility. The panelists will be Chancellor Siverud, Vice Chancellor and Provost Gretchen Ritter, and Chief Student Experience Officer Alan Groves. Now that discussion will be moderated by Associate Provost for Strategic Initiatives, Marcel Haddix. If you have any questions, you can submit them for the panel ahead of time. And if you're interested in attending, you need to register online by Monday, so hop on that. And applications for studying abroad are now open for this summer in short-term courses. Applications are reviewed at a rolling basis. The final deadline for short-term courses is October 15th and then Thursday, February 1st for summer programs. Students can take summer courses in a variety of places including Florence, London, and Madrid at Syracuse centers. Internships are also offered to gain international work experience and build a global network. In the spring, short-term courses are collaborating with the College of Engineering and computer science, Falk College, and the Maxwell School. And Olivia, uh, a lot to follow tonight. We're following a lot of different stories. Hopefully mm -hmm. we get Leia back in a few moments here. Hopefully. But one thing I've had my eye on this week it's the weather outside. It the was weather. so warm last week. It's starting to get a little cooler. What's going on? I know. It's weird. I mean, this morning I woke up and it was cold. I was walking to class and all of a sudden I'm hot in a sweater. You really don't know what to expect, except for we do have someone who might know what to expect, and that is Max Williams. Max, how it's, how's it looking out there? 
That's right, guys. It was such a beautiful day today. Syracuse sitting at 70 degrees right now. Mostly sunny skies was just a beautiful one, one, one out there today. Now looking ahead into tonight, temperatures are going to drop a little bit. It's going to become a little bit cooler. We're going to get into the low to mid, or excuse me, the mid to low 50s. Now looking ahead at your next three days, Friday looking beautiful, 75 degrees, mostly sunny skies. Your weekend looking a little iffy. Chance for some rain on Sunday and temperatures staying within the mid 60s. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Max. The Onondaga County Sheriff's Office is proposing a new body camera contract. The deal with camera company Axon would be worth $1.5 million per year. The last contract the Sheriff's Office signed in 2021 was worth $600,000 per year. The Sheriff's Office's initial $120 million budget did not include funding for new body cameras. The contract received increased attention following the deputy-involved shooting of two teens earlier this month. Well, a longtime Syracuse car dealership is shutting its doors for good. After nearly 60 years of kicking the tires, Heritage Lincoln on Genesee Street will be closing up shop as part of a consolidation agreement with its parent company, Ford. Michael Spinelli, who took over managing the dealership from his father a few years ago, says Lincoln wanted to make the dealership, uh, wanted the dealership to make expensive upgrades that just didn't make sense. In 2022, Lincoln told its dealers that they would have to spend close to a million dollars on chargers and other pieces of equipment to sell Lincoln's electric cars. It would either be that or they would leave the luxury brand. The company says about 88% of its dealers have committed to those upgrades. This one is not. And an election on Saturday could change the way the town of Manlius is governed. The town is looking at a ward system for the fourth time. It's been voted down by, every, by residents every time it's been proposed, but what does it mean exactly? As you can see on your screen, the vote, if it went through, would create six wards in the town, and each ward would have one town councilor. They'd each be elected for a two-year term. Right now, councilors are elected to four-year terms in the town. Advocates say the wards create more equal representation, but those opposed say it's a version of quote Trumpism and that it squeezed out voters. Two children are dead after an Amish buggy was rear-ended in Jefferson County yesterday. A GMC pickup was traveling down Route 290 in Alexandria when it collided with the buggy. First responders provided life-saving efforts to the two children but they just couldn't save them. Two other adults and two other children were transported to the Samaritan Medical Center and then moved to SUNY Upstate the GMC driver, meanwhile, was not injured in the crash. Those in Oswego might want to double check before drinking your tap water. The county's health department is telling those in some parts of the village of Pulaski to boil all water used for drinking and cooking. You can see if you're affected on your screen right now. Laura Sharp Elementary is also included in the boil water order. The county says the cause was its water system losing pressure after some main breaks on the west side of the village. It says the village is working to repair the breaks and restore service as soon as possible. They will also be sampling the water once it's fixed to make sure there is no contamination in the system. All right, if you commute through DeWitt, meanwhile, you might have to take a different route starting next week. Construction workers will be at the railroad crossing on Route 290 near the Liverpool Pool and Spa and the I-481 overpass. The railroad tracks are being dug up and removed from the road. That work is expected to last three to six days. A detour will direct drivers around the tracks to East Genesee and Erie Boulevards if you're affected. And who doesn't love fishing, especially if it's free? If you're a fan of getting out on the water and doing a little bit of fishing, you can enjoy a free day of fishing without a freshwater license. This is the fifth free fishing day of the year. While you won't need a license, all other regulations still apply. The final free fishing day of the year is scheduled for Veterans Day on November 11th. All right, Olivia, I just might be there. Well, if you've been thinking about a road trip, you might want to head over to the fairgrounds this weekend. That's because the biggest RV clearance sale in CNY will be there from tomorrow to Sunday. There's going to be all kinds of deals on pop-up campers, travel trailers, and RVs, and you can get one on the spot with financing right there. The show will run from 9 a.m. to 7 tomorrow and 9 to 5 on Saturday and Sunday. And for the first time in the show's history, parking and admission is completely free. When we come back, Rupert Murdoch stepping down from the empire he created. What it means for the future of Fox News. Plus, Ukrainian President Zelensky is in Washington. What his third visit to the White House means for the U.S. involvement in Ukraine. News Live at 6 returns in just a moment.
You're watching Citrus TV News Live at 6 with Bradley Hoppenstein, Olivia Maniscalco, and Max Williams. Now, your campus news leader continues. Welcome back to News Live at 6. A media titan is retiring. Rupert Murdoch, the Australian executive, is stepping down as chairman of the board for the Fox and News Corp boards. His eldest son, Lachlan, becomes the sole chairman of the companies. Murdoch will still remain involved as chairman, as, as chairman emeritus. Future for the 92 year old has been speculated for a while, and the inspiration for the HBO series Succession, you might have seen it. Murdoch's departure comes after Fox was forced to pay nearly $800 million to Dominion Voting Systems for lies the company aired about the 2020 election. And in DC, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky is visiting the US yet again. Zelensky spoke to lawmakers this afternoon and pleaded for more aid from the United States. He then made his way to the White House to meet with President Biden and the First Lady. Zelensky updated lawmakers on the war and said more money is needed to beat Russia. President Biden is set to announce more aid for Ukraine, this time a $325 million package. The Ukrainian president was welcomed with open arms by New York Senator Chuck Schumer and some Republicans. But other conservatives are questioning how much money the United States is giving Ukraine. As of today, the U.S. has given over $113 billion to the country since last March. Wow. Well, auto workers reaching the first week of their strike against the big three Detroit companies. Right now, almost 13,000 workers are on strike at three plants across the Midwest. The union is threatening to expand its strikes across the country if a deal is not met by noon tomorrow. That union, UAW, represents almost 150,000 workers in total. And coming up, I'll have a look at your five full day forecasts. Stay with us. One in three adults has pre-diabetes. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother, yes. you, your football buddy, your football buddy, you, your plumber, breathe right into your foot, your plumber's masseuse, yes. you, your dog walker, your cat jogger. With early diagnosis, pre-diabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. From the Citrus TV Weather Center, this is SU's most accurate weather forecast. Welcome back to Citrus TV News. Looking at the temperatures across the region, Syracuse still staying within the 70s. Arrest, the rest of central New York is staying pretty warm within the mid to low 60s. Now, Syracuse students, I know you guys are all ready for Juice Jam, so let's take a look at a couple things here ahead of the concert on Saturday. So it's going to be a little chilly. Cloudy with some temperatures in the low 60s, so make sure you bring some warm clothing. Now, you also are going to want to bring a raincoat. We could have a chance for some showers throughout the concert, and it could also be windy. Wind speeds could be up to 11 miles per hour, so make sure you bring a sweatshirt um, along with that raincoat. Now, looking ahead to your weekend, uh, this is what um, the rain forecast is looking for Sunday. So as you see, this low area of low pressure is going to make our way in late afternoon on Sunday and then make its way out um, as we get into the evening hours. Um, so a little bit of rain on Sunday. 
Now looking at our full five day forecast, uh, tomorrow looking beautiful, mostly sunny skies, 75 degrees. Looking ahead to your weekend, mostly cloudy tomorrow, that best chance for some rain on Sunday as I just showed you. Temperatures staying within the mid 60s. Looking ahead to the beginning of your next week, uh, temperatures uh, in the upper 60s um, and staying partly sunny. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Max, although I am not loving that juice jam weather, but an indoor activity right now. Leah Cohn is live at the Human Rights Film Festival in Newhouse ahead of the first film screening. Leah, how's it going? At Newhouse for the annual 21st uh, live, the 21st festival. I'm here with filmmaker Anglo Madsen Minax. He created the film North by Current and I wanted to talk to you today about what inspiration did you have for creating this film? Um, the film is a personal, I come from an experimental film background so it's a little bit more of a personal essay film about my relationship with my family um, and uh, yeah I wouldn't say I had any inspiration um, more just like guttural impetus drive and need to make the work um, yeah, any personal work is uh, a little bit more gutturally driven than I think mo like many documentaries that investigate issues or themes separate from the person making them. Um, so yeah, I started working on the film when my um, niece passed away um, and it led me to um, yeah, really just explore my relationship with my sister and my family in interesting and new ways and through lenses of trans identity and religion and ruralness in Michigan. So. Thank you. Another question that SU students are wondering is how does the Syracuse community and specifically the Syracuse University students could benefit from viewing a film like this, you know, in a festival for human rights? Um, yeah, I mean, film is amazing because it's a uh, a way to learn about you know worlds outside of yourself. Definitely. So I mean, Definitely. you know, any like opportunity you have to learn about experiences beyond yourself right. will enrich in your life. For all students, for thank so. you so much for yeah. speaking with us today. And we'll be back. Thanks, guys. Coming up, the tail end of baseball season has been kind to those on the bottom of the barrel, and Syracuse football is in need of an answer in the receiving core. We've got that and a lot more on the docket for sports. Here's to the straggly ones, the lopsided ones, the first ones, the I miss my beard ones, the hey, I look good with this ones, but no way he's grown that in the weak ones. The black, brown, red, and gray ones. The, um, that one. The itchy ones. The never forgotten ones. The ones grown by dad. The ones grown for dad. The started late ones. The absolutely filthy ones. The drawn on ones, the finger ones, the pin ones. The I nearly didn't do it this year ones. And the yeah, why not ones. They all raise awareness, raise funds, start conversations, and save lives. Because whatever you grow will save a bro. Learn more at Movember.com. Dad, they took over my bedroom. Come on, come on. Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Dad! You saved me. Dad? Are you okay? I'm fine, dear. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. And now, your Citrus TV Sports Report. 
The next man up mantra has taken a necessary role in the Syracuse football tight ends room. Welcome into sports, I'm Jesse Cook. SU's receiving yards leader from last season, Ronde Gadsden, was ruled out for the year with a right foot injury last week. When Syracuse toppled Purdue on the road on Saturday, 35 to 20, the Orange tried out some new combos, but it didn't go as planned. SU completed only half of its passes in the win for the squad's worst single game completion rate since last season. With Army coming up in week four, Syracuse has a major test for those pass catchers. The Black Knights boast a top 10 passing defense in the country, holding opponents to just a 54% completion rate. Kickoff for Syracuse and Army is set for 12 on Saturday. Follow at Citrus TV Sports on all your social media for live updates throughout the contest, as well as post-game coverage. And you can do the same for all SU athletic events, including tonight's statement matchup for Syracuse women's soccer. SU hosts the number three ranked program in the country with undefeated Florida State. The Cuse has not won a match in the month of September. Syracuse struggles putting shots in the back of the net. The Orange have put up just nine goals on the season. By contrast, in fewer matches, the Seminoles have doubled that total. Play begins at 7. And let's grab the bats. If you play for the Syracuse Mets, you did that in a big way last night with every batter recording a hit. The blue and orange beat up the Scranton Wilkes-Barre rail, rail Riders from the jump. Danny Mendick opened up the scoring in the first inning with this opposite field smash. He crushed it. He's got 11 home runs on the season in the minors, one in the majors. He's yo-yoed back and forth, showing off a big league swing right there. As for the rest of the game, second inning tied up 1-1. Michael Perez into the Salt City deck. Syracuse piled on from there a couple of six-run innings after that, and this was a wash. Syracuse wins 14-3. The Mets earned their first 10-run victory since June. Syracuse continues its final homestand of the season in just a few minutes with first pitch against Scranton at 635. This stretch is all for pride because Syracuse was eliminated a long time ago, even posting a losing record in this month alone. The Major League Mets are in Philadelphia tonight for the start of a three-game set against the Phillies. This is the do-or-die moment for New York. The Mets will be eliminated from playoff contention with three losses. The NL East rival Phillies occupy the top wildcard spot, so NY has the opportunity to make a dent in the standings or fall completely off the map. First pitch is set for 7.05. Life is no less stressful for the Yankees. The pinstripes are trying to avoid a sweep at the hands of the AL East rival Blue Jays tonight. Toronto showcases the second best earned run average in the majors at 371. As for New York, like the Mets, the Yankees will be eliminated with three more losses. But unlike the Mets, the, the Yankees bats have the worst strikeout and hitting numbers in baseball over the last month. New York and Toronto roll into action at 715. Heading back to the gridiron, the Giants are on the road at the 49ers for Thursday night football. New York is in desperate need of a statement win. After suffering a week one shutout, the Giants earned a come from behind victory in week two, but it came against a Cardinals team that has lost nine straight games. San Fran is an undefeated juggernaut. The Niners are the only team in the league that averages more than 200 passing yards and 150 rushing yards per game. And that's all I've got in sports. It's a great day to be a sports fan. Lots of fun stuff happening. All right, thank you so much, Jesse. I'm Christian McCaffrey in fantasy, so high hopes for tonight. On the other side, Max Williams with your wake-up weather. Stay with us. Thank you.
When you wake up tomorrow, it's going to be a little cool, but mostly sunny, 46 degrees, and then warming up as we get later into the day. Now, looking again into tonight, temperatures dropping into the mid-50s. We could even see temperatures in the 40s, um, but looking pretty clear. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Max. Up and coming artist It's Murph came to campus last weekend. Citrus TV's Sammy Lindell explains how the 23 year old who just graduated college in the spring is harnessing social media to make a name for himself in the music world. I just turned 23. Like, like I'm no different than any of you guys. Like, I'm here just to have fun. Garrett Murphy is a rising star in the house music industry. But the man that goes by It's Murph on stage is just like any other SU student off it. Murph started producing music in sophomore year of high school. He then attended USC to study music production. Just four months post-grad, Murph has over 2 million monthly listeners on Spotify. I waited for forever to release music. Like I wasn't going to release a song until I thought it was like industry competitive. You know, like I wanted to be like the best song ever. Something that if I heard naturally, I'd be like, oh, I'm throwing that on my playlist. Like that's a really good song. It's like impactful. Murph's hits brought him to one of the largest music festivals in the world, Coachella. He didn't even have his college degree yet. He says many of his USC friends got to watch him perform. Oh, that's super special. Also, like, USC, like, everyone goes to Coachella. Murph performed at Coachella before graduating USC this past May and says that social media had a big role in getting him to the stage. For now, like, me coming up as an artist, how are you going to hear my song if it's not, if I'm not promoting it on TikTok? Murph says that any up-and-coming artist should take a chance and start posting online. All it takes is one person to notice you. There. I've just been riding the wave, of having as much fun as possible and just taking in all the moments. It's been a blast. With stardom comes lots of stress. Murph wants to make having fun a priority while on this ride, one that serves as food for his soul. Sammy Lindell, Citrus TV. Sammy, thank you so much. That was a great event. I was yeah. there. I helped set up the whole thing. Wow. Only took me three tries to actually remember to give you your wristband. Yeah, that's right. Brad said he would, he would bring me my wristband three times. Never really happened. Did you go? I was not there, but it looked pretty cool. I wish I was. You missed out. <laughs> what was your favorite song you played? Food for the Soul. Obviously. obviously. That's, that's his song. one song that everybody knows. Yeah. He played it like three times. Hit yeah. every single time. He also had some throwbacks. I liked Mr. Brightside, Dancing Queen, I Got a Feeling. Classic, classic banger. Oh, Electric Love. <laughs> yeah. That was good. That's a good song. Yeah, great yeah. song, great song. Yeah. I had a great time. Yeah, great event. Raised a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Feeding America. Awesome. Feeding America. Nothing exactly. to complain about there. And everyone had a good time, it seems like. Yeah, exactly. I, I couldn't complain. I hope he comes back next year. Can you make that happen? I will do my best. <laughs> but that's all the time we have for you tonight on Live at 6 for this Thursday. Don't forget, you can keep up with what's happening on campus. Follow us at Citrus TV News on X and Instagram. Now for the entire Citrus TV News team, I'm Olivia Maniscalco. And I'm Bradley Hoppenstein. Have a great night. Bump some It's Murph on Spotify. And we will see you a week from tonight. Yes, we will.